Hello, and welcome to Integral Zen. This is an opportunity to talk about why there's the integral in Integral Zen. Why Integral Zen? Why not just Zen? That's a great question that we're going to begin to explore today. And I'd like to begin with one of my favorite quotes in graduate school. The only difference between a culture and a psychosis is the number of people involved. Weston LeBaire, he was an American anthropologist that studied the ghost dance as the Native Americans were being ushered off to the reservations and their culture was dying. One of the last gasps of spirituality was this ghost dance that spontaneously appeared in their culture. And uh, Weston LeBaire noticed, noticing our culture and their culture, and he noticed this quote, the only difference between a culture and a psychosis is a number of people involved. I just love this quote. And I see it applies to our culture as well as other cultures. From the inside, what does a culture look like? It looks like the truth. From the outside, what does a culture look like? It looks like sheer madness. <laughs> and speaking of madness, at a deep, deep level, we all know this world is dying. This age is coming to a close. And at the very same time, a new world, the next age, is being born. We will all be called to hospice this dying age and midwife the next age at the very same time, right now. What was it like before this current age? What was it like before the age of science? What was it like before the Enlightenment, before the age of reason, before even modern chemistry? At the beginning of the age of science, before science, chemistry, and alchemy had been separated, this is what a laboratory looked like. And they were studying not only the elements, but they were studying the psyche. They were studying the personality, and there was a collapse. There had been no differentiation between what was inside and what was outside. They were searching for the philosopher's stone, and at the same time, they were trying to transmute lead into gold, which had a deep spiritual significance to them. Before science, this is what the universe looked like. Here's a pre-science map of the solar system. Notice the Earth is at the center, the center of the universe in the center of the solar system. The moon, Mercury, Venus, the sun, all revolved around the Earth, as did the other planets, as did the stars. Some pioneers of modern science introduced a radical new idea. This idea was that the Earth is not the center of the universe. Pioneers like Nicholas Copernicus, Galileo, Johannes Kepler, and Isaac Newton all saw that the old way of looking at the universe needed to be remapped. The ideas needed to be remodeled. And they, a huge shift occurred in this map of reality. And suddenly they understand, they understood that the sun was at the center of the solar system. And the planets all revolved around the sun. And the only thing that ever revolved around the earth was the moon. This was a huge difference, a much different map of reality. So at the turn of every age, when the next age is being formed, the question of what is reality 
always presents itself anew. And this is the old parable of the blind men and the elephant, or shall we say the blind men and women and the elephant. <laughs> so briefly, no one knows what reality is. No one has ever seen an elephant. And one blind man walks up and runs into the tusk and he touches the tusk and he says, oh, an elephant is like a spear. And a woman walks up and she touches the trunk and she says, no, no, the elephant is like a hose. And as each blind person walks up to the elephant, they touch another part of the elephant and they all have a very different picture of what an elephant is. And to really get an idea of what the elephant is, what the reality of this elephant is, they must put all these ideas, these experiences together. It's a very similar thing that happens we're out when we're on the verge of a new age. So, who are the pioneers of the next age? Alfred North Whitehead, Albert Einstein, Bucky Fuller, Carl Jung, and Ken Wilber. These are the ones, the first four are the ones that I picked out in graduate school 30 years ago when I realized this age was coming to a close. And I became intensely curious about if that's true, who are the pioneers of this next age? Who are they? And these are the first four that I found. Ken Wilbur was just beginning to write, and I didn't run across him for another 20 years. But this is the list right here to me. So here's a couple quotes of these famous individuals. Alfred North Whitehead, if science is not to degenerate into a medley of ad hoc hypotheses, it must become philosophical and must enter upon a thorough criticism of its own foundations. Albert Einstein, no problem can be solved from the same level of consciousness that created it. If you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. Buckminster Fuller. You never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. Very wise words from Bucky Fuller. And Carl Jung. The meeting of two personalities is like the contact of two chemical substances. If there's any reaction, both are transformed. Jung was a medical doctor. He was a scientist. He was a pioneer exploring the interior world of the psyche. He admittedly was not a philosopher. In his own words, he said, I cut a poor cloth as a philosopher. I'm a healer. I'm a healer of the human soul. He did not create a philosophical framework that adequately held his discoveries. But he had a huge impact on the postmodern world. Before Jung, it was thought that the ego was the center of the universe. You may know some people that still feel that way, that their ego, they are the center of the universe. <laughs> After you, it became clear to many of us that the self is the center of the universe and the ego circles around the self. It's a speck of dust in a vast cosmic sea. This, this self, with a capital S, is selfless. As Jumpo Roshi is fine, fond of saying, the ego is a figment of divine imagination. 
So what is needed is a new map of reality. We need a new map to make the old one obsolete, just like they did at the turning of the last age, the beginning of the age of science. We need a new elephant. We need a conceptual framework big enough to include everything we can possibly experience. A conceptual framework where nothing is excluded. A conceptual framework which transcends and yet includes all of human experience. A framework that will do for the social sciences what the periodic chart did for chemistry. Integral theory is such a framework. It provides a new framework for a new understanding of the dynamics of human interaction. It provides the equivalent of a periodic chart for the social sciences. It provides something that makes human interrelationships far more understanding even predictable. <laughs> the Wilbercombs lattice, which we will go into in detail later on, is the beginning of such a human periodic chart. The next age is being born, right? 